Welcome back to the Illuminated Path. This is episode 61. Today is a live coaching call with Katie. And in our call today, we talk a lot about her business and she's questioning whether it's the right move for her to make a little bit of a shift in her business and to kind of change what her niche is. So we talk about what it might be holding her back and what fears might be there for her. And we also talk about how, you know, her personal experiences can really help others and why this business decision might make a lot of sense to her. So listen to the full call to hear the coaching episode. Thank you, Katie, for joining me today and allowing me to guide you in this coaching session. I'm really happy to be here with you. Um, What can I help you with today? What sort of question do you have for me? Well, um, thanks for taking me on. And so the, the major question on my mind right now is that I'm, I'm also a coach and I'm a spiritual strategist and coach and help people with their um, spiritual lives and forming deeper connections. And so I had an aha moment mm-hmm. about a month ago that I have ADHD tendencies. And okay. so I don't have a formal diagnosis. I'm 46. Um, I've had quite a bit of success in life academically and, you know, I've gotten things done. Mm-hmm. Um, but what brought on the sudden realization was um, in my own business, I have I really struggle with making like backwards plans. Like, okay, okay there's something I want to do in six months. Let me outline all the steps to be able to do that. And with an extensive social media calendar, I mean, I, I use social media pretty effectively, Yeah. but so I'm making a calendar for like a month or two at a time. I see these magical calendars and stuff like that. And they just, I look at them and I'm in complete overwhelm. Mm-hmm. And so those, yeah, that was kind of my first clue. So the, the sudden realization, and when I started doing a little more research and reading about it, I thought, I, I think that this is the thing uh, for, <laughs> for me. Um, I've not thought a formal diagnosis and I don't know that that's so important at this point in my life. Yeah. Um, but actually started getting coaching around ADHD, which I've had one session that's been really helpful. So the question then, I also had this sudden epiphany, which was, oh my gosh, I think I've been helping my clients who also have, many of whom have had ADHD or ADHD tendencies mm. over the years. Some I've even referred to, like, maybe this is something you want to go get tested for. Okay. As, see, if there's, uh, see if there's options for you. Yeah, but I realized in my coaching, I've already built in a lot of strategies, and I kind of had this thought, impulse, question, is that something to narrow in on a little bit more? Is that something where I want to pay a little more explicit attention, Mm -hmm. or is that typical of a lot of ADHD people, just a really, really great idea that doesn't need to be pursued right now? (laughs) Okay, yeah, that's a great... Question and thank you for all the background information on that. Um, it definitely sounds like you have a lot of experience in this, even without, you know, like a formal diagnosis, like you said. Which I don't know that if that's necessary either. I mean, of course, if that's a path you want to take, but just knowing like what sorts of things that you're struggling with and the symptoms that you're having, and that you do have all of these like really awesome tools and strategies that you use personally and then that it is coming in with your business. So if you find that, you know, a lot of your clients um, tend to already be this way, do you feel like you're currently doing any sort of messaging to like attract those types of clients just based on like what you might be telling them you're going to help them with or guide them through um, without explicitly saying you know, the words ADHD, um, like, do you feel like you're already doing that in a sense at all? No, I definitely, I have in the past, like, um, but it's been a bit inconsistent and not, not necessarily focused. Mm -hmm. So for instance, and this is years ago, probably three, two or three years ago, I just held a workshop, like meditation for people who can't sit still. Yeah. And so that was kind of attracting the, maybe the ADHD um, crowd. Yeah. And I began, I began to uh, kind of experiment lately with using the words or, or, and then sometimes not using the words. So the answer to your question is sort of, yeah, <laughs> but not, not in a very targeted way. Okay. So when you asked the question, I know you said that it kind of came up as like a, a possibility, like, how does that, how does that really feel to you? Like, do you feel like 
excited about that potential to niche down a little bit? Or is it more like, ooh, I don't know if that's really a great idea? Like, I guess just how are you currently feeling about possibly niching down in that way? Yeah. So I, I'd say I feel um, even a bit emotional about it in the sense that I think so many people, for for them, I think so many people struggle with thinking they can't be spiritual because their minds aren't quiet enough. Yeah. And they're they're measuring themselves against an invisible stick. And I, I've certainly felt like that before, too. And so in that way, like excited, like I feel excited, but it feels very meaningful. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like, I mean, typically like our best clients is kind of like a younger version of ourselves. I don't know if you've kind of heard that before or if that feels right to you, but. Oh, yeah. yeah. So just knowing like what you've been through and what you've done to overcome it even if you don't feel like you're a hundred percent perfectly, you know, where you might want to be currently in that area, like you have so much value and guidance to give to someone who's experiencing that right now. Um, so, I mean, just from like you saying that it does sound like it could be really a beautiful thing for you. And also just because of the way like ADHD is spoken about today, maybe not fully understood by people um, and that you have that experience both personally and with your clients. um, It's almost like how else can you talk about it? How can you like reframe it for some of those people so that they don't feel like they're so stuck with that diagnosis and more so talking about it in different ways and just explaining like symptoms and um, how you can really help them through that especially like you said, with being able to be more spiritual, like that's absolutely something that they might be feeling a block in. And when you're talking like directly to them and they're like, oh yeah, that's me. Like they're going to be so, they're going to feel so seen. Thank you for that. Yeah. I think what's coming up for me is, I was just telling someone today, I, I, I need things in my life, including my spiritual life, to be less complicated. Okay. And so um, uh, a great example, um, I've maybe in the past had like 14 journals, one for this, one for that, one for the new moon, <laughs> one for my life, one for the business, one for this and that and the other. It's just too many. And <laughs> just doing ADHD, ADHD research, the research is like, you probably want to over-categorize. I was like, oh my gosh, they're reading my mind. Yeah. When actually what benefits you is simplicity. Um, and so even just helping people have a very simple set of strategies that they can implement in their spiritual lives feels really valuable. And that, that's probably true for non-ADHD people too. You know, people have busy lives. They don't have time always to do a two-hour ritual that's very complicated. Yeah, definitely. So it sounds like you have figured out some ways and strategies to simplify things for yourself. And I think everybody could just really benefit from that. Like you said, everybody's so busy and if they are struggling with like ADHD and you are, I mean, even like what you just said, like that you, it felt like they were talking right to you. Um, If you are talking to those people with those same struggles and either labeling it as ADHD or not, um, but even giving examples like that, like just having an overwhelm of things like journals or the way that they're trying to go about things and it's over complicating it and you're going to speak to people just like just with that alone um do you have any like fears coming up around potentially niching down like like that yeah so the the fear that's always there i think is um is it too narrow mm. And I, you know, I help other people. Like I help your entrepreneurs niche down too. So I'm well aware (laughs) of how I coach people, but you know, when it's you, it's, (laughs) oh yeah, it it always feels so scary. Like, is that, is that too narrow? Um, Yeah. Because even within the spiritual, even within the spirituality crowd, I already have kind of a niche as well. And so is that too niche? Yeah. I'm not sure. So I think that's the fear and it feels like there's a lack of clarity. Okay. Um, would you be willing to share what like your current kind of niche in is within like your spirituality crowd, like you just mentioned? Sure. So um, for years, I was helping 
Christians who wanted to be metaphysical okay. and get rid of a lot of the fear and the shame and the dualistic thinking. Mm-hmm. And I'm still doing a bit of that, but I've pivoted in the past six to eight months to working with entrepreneurs and leaders um, using shamanic and energetic tools to help them with their spirituality and increase their ripple effect. Um, so obviously having, that's still somewhat in transition. Yeah. And obviously to me anyway, having three niches is crazy. That's not going to work. Um, so I think the lack of clarity there is the entrepreneurial, you know, is this an entrepreneurial and leader niche? Is this just a niche for spiritual seekers? So it feels like there's um, some classic ADHD tendencies there to kind of try to fulfill too many things at once because they're all good ideas. Yeah. Um, and then getting the clarity what what's the what's the direction to um, to have some depth there? Yeah. So have you really been enjoying and leaning into what you've pivoted into the last six to eight months, like helping with like uh, entrepreneurs and leaders? Like, does that still feel like the right direction for you to continue moving in? Y- yes, in the sense, do some increased expansion from the kind of deconstructing Christian crowd. Um, and so in that sense, yeah, definitely the expansion piece and like working with entrepreneurs, leaders, people who have big impact feels right. It maybe feels a little bit broad. Okay. Like that could maybe have some more focus. Yeah. So I see what you're saying, how having like your previous kind of niche around, um, like the Christianity and working with Christians and then your current one that you've kind of recently moved into and then throwing in like the ADHD symptoms or tendencies in there feels like a lot of different things. And, but I heard you just say like, that's, that's crazy. But you as an individual person are someone who resonates with all of these things, right? So (laughs) even if it feels like super niche, and I know you said like you already do help people with this as well, but it's hard when you're doing it for yourself, right? But if these all resonate with you, yes, there's more than likely a lot of other people out there that actually do resonate with all of those things. And like the more specific you can get and like you're really talking to that one, like really trying to talk to only one person, the more like people are going to be like, oh my gosh, that is spot on to what I need and like what I'm looking for it's helpful to kind of remind yourself when those fears come up of like, am I niching down too much? Is this like too specific? This is crazy. Reminding yourself, well, this is all really relevant to me. So it can absolutely be very relevant to someone else and many other people really. And they're going to feel like I said earlier, really seen and, and heard when they're like, oh my gosh, I actually resonate with everything she's talking about. So I think it's more about not that it's too crazy or, or too many things to put into like a niche. I think it's really about just clarifying the messaging so that it makes more sense to you. and doesn't feel like it's kind of all over the place. I'm not saying you said all over the place, but just so it feels a little bit easier to really understand yeah, and exactly. explain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So do you feel like yeah, and it's still the ADHD part is still pretty new. Yeah. But it feels it sounds like you're already really helping people with this and so you have like that experience and even you know could potentially go back to some of those old clients or current clients and ask for you know maybe some insight or testimonials into how you know maybe some of your specific strategies with that really helped them or what they really liked about working with you and your ability to guide them through that or even bringing up ADHD to them and having them like really feel seen and heard through that. Um, And I, you know, having like a way to just do a little bit of kind of market research within people that you have worked with and have had success with can also really help guide you and also reassure you like, okay, this is really actually a good direction to go in. Yeah. Because it's a simple suggestion, but you know, when I have it done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because it sounded like at the beginning when I asked you about, 
you know, how that felt to potentially niche down in this. Um, you sounded like it was really exciting and like because it's something that you've experienced and worked through kind of unknowingly for a while, right? Um, just how meaningful it can be for other people. Like that's that's really powerful. Well, is it yeah, you know, when I think about my own spiritual experiences, I mean, of which there's so many uh, mm-hmm. over the decades. But I, you know, I know that I have benefited from the things that a lot of people with ADHD say they can never do, like meditate. Yeah. You know, it is possible and maybe just takes a different sort of set of strategic skills mm-hmm. um, in order to get there. Yeah. And how beneficial that is and how much people's lives would, you know, how much benefit they would get from being able to engage in those really traditional practices, maybe just in new ways. Yeah. I hear you so much on that. I have heard many people um, saying like they, they just can't sit still to meditate. And so if you are able to speak to someone, you know, when they're hearing it from someone who doesn't struggle with like ADHD and they're telling them, oh, well, like, let's just meditate, like try to incorporate that there. It's not going to be easy for them to just like, okay, yeah, sure. I can, I could just do that now. But coming from someone like you who has those extra steps, those extra strategies and knowing, oh, okay, this is actually someone who's struggled with this before themselves. So they do know what I'm going through. They do know what I'm experiencing and you can actually help them really begin to do something like meditate. And that's incredible because I think everybody could um, have amazing benefits from meditation. I'm huge on meditation, but like just as that one example. Yeah, the whole world, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Um, but just as that one example, like you talking to your audience, to potential clients about like the benefits of meditation, layering in that part of, okay, well, I you know, I am someone who has these ADHD tendencies. I've helped others with this to get to a place where they can meditate. Like that's so much more powerful for those people who are like, no, I don't, I don't have that belief that I, that I could actually meditate. Like that's way too hard for me. Yeah. And yeah. And helping, I think just helping everyone, um, entrepreneurs or not see the benefits in neurodivergence. Yeah. But it's not, it's not always a problem. Um, there's benefits that come with it too, especially for entrepreneurs. And my suspicion is that many entrepreneurs are um, probably have neurodivergence because it is such an idea explosion way to exist in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And entrepreneurs basically have lots and lots of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, I mean, you know, obviously... I would say take some time to really think about this a little bit more for yourself and how it feels. But just based on everything you've said to me so far and like the amazing way that you could reach these um, reach these people who are struggling with this, like I think there's definitely a need for that and they will feel more seen and heard when when you are talking directly to them. Um, it's definitely not too limiting in terms of like having that be a part of your niche. And like you said, almost all entrepreneurs, like if they are not, you know, if they are, aren't fully neurodivergent, like just having running a business in in some way or another is, can be chaotic. There's just so much that goes into it and into this strategy. So having those tools, even if someone isn't like a diagnosed person with ADHD, just telling them, hey, I actually work with people with this, they struggle with this, whether you um, identify as this specific diagnosis or not, there's a lot of strategies and tools that you have that can really help them. Yeah. And I think for the sort of entrepreneur who has a lot of trouble kind of getting, getting their grounding and getting their footing. Yeah. Often, it, you know, they call it shiny, um, shiny object syndrome, it's, you know, going to a rabbit trail. Uh-huh. And, and that's all fine. And there's some truth to that. And in my experience, the strategies that people have tried to give me in the past to not do that have been 
wildly unsuccessful. They're like, well, just focus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, but that's not actually a strategy. That maybe something that not everyone is I'd like. Some people like me need the step by step on what that actually means. Yeah. And so I've had to develop, you know, develop those for myself. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, that's, it's hard when it's not like this tangible, like, okay, take these steps because that can have people feeling really stuck. And they're like, okay, what do you mean by just focus? (laughs) So there's, there's so much value in what you have to teach. And I think that if you, you know, are a little bit worried about, um, seeing it as niching down too much or anything like that, um, you could potentially be limiting who you're able to help. So to me, it sounds like a beautiful idea, but I would definitely recommend that you sit down with it, think about it and how you can actually combine everything to like really make sense in a more simple, like here's who I help and, and, and why and how. Um, and and start working with it. Start maybe posting some stuff, maybe not every single thing, but putting that out there a little bit and and seeing how that continues to feel. And if it starts to really grow in that direction, then I would say lean into it. Yeah, that feels that feels really good. And I um I think it's easy easy enough to kind of test it yeah. over the next few months while I'm getting my own coaching, right? So that there's something in place. Um when you know when that time is there like when i'm ready to make make sure i'm not doing harm um to anyone beyond offering tips yeah um and then yeah then i'll know if the market is actually like there uh there for people or not yeah that sounds like a a really great idea um i think that that's beautiful is there any other questions that you have for me any other things that i can potentially answer for you before we end this session this is, yeah, no, this is really the main one. And um, it's been really helpful just to kind of have the open and honest questions. Yeah. And for me, it was, and I, like, I had the realization a month ago, and it was really like the next day that I thought, is this something you're really being called to help other people with? And that's lasted for a month, which is a pretty long time. Yeah. Um, so this felt like just the really perfect moment to kind of have this conversation and, and yeah, receive your, receive your coaching around it. Beautiful. Well, I'm really glad that we were able to, yeah, have this conversation. And like you said, if it's been on your mind um, and and just having kind of that insight from me as far as I'm hearing what you're saying and trying to reflect it back to you and really, you know, guide you to to give it a try, because um, I think it could be really amazing and help so many people. So I'm really glad that I was able to connect with you and chat through that with you. Me too. Thanks so much. You're welcome.